So today we're going to be doing a video on how to change the throttle cable on one of the Craftsman 2 HD garden tractors. It has the Kohler Magnum 18 opposed twin. <clears throat> so first off we're going to take this bolt loose that's over on the side of the motor that goes to the carburetor. I'm using an adjustable wrench for this just because it's easier than fighting to try and find the right size. It shouldn't be super tight anyways, but you never know, you might run into needing an actual wrench. It's in kind of a bad spot to be using this, but we'll see what we can do. If I can get this thing to tighten down right, we won't have so many issues. There we go. Or I'm just rounding it. One of the two. Alright, it's moving. Might need a little bit of spray lube to help get it moving a little easier. The only bad thing about using an adjustable wrench is they don't stay exactly how you want them tightness wise. There we go. Got her loosened up now. You don't have to take this all the way off, but just enough to get it to where you can slide that out from underneath and then pop it out of the throttle lever on the carburetor. So we should be able to, just a little bit more and get her out. The only reason I'm changing this is because this one's seized up and I have a spare one. Now on the side over here, we're going to go ahead and take these loose. We're going to have to anyways to get this out. So go ahead and take these loose. Like I said, they're not super tight. These are just into the side panels and they're just sheet steel. So if you go too tight with them anyways, it'll strip threads and won't be any use. These ones I'm going to have to take all the way out so I can spread them apart. But it's no big deal. Just put it back on where it goes afterwards. Now the cable I have is an exact fit for this, but it'll work. It's the right, I mean, it'll work with how I'm going to do it. It's not the factory way, but it's okay. We're not making this the same way that the manufacturer did. It's fine. Sometimes you gotta use what you gotta use. I had gotten this machine for a really good deal with a good mower deck that spins freely and has very little rust, so I'm gonna put a little work into this get it going and then maybe try and sell it or maybe a family member of mine might need it still unsure of what I'm gonna do with it but regardless it's a nice machine and these Kohler command or Kohler magnums are really well built much better than the newer Kohler stuff in my opinion I'm not a big Kohler fan as it is but from what I've had Kohler Magnum wise I've enjoyed them I had it I had a Kohler Magnum 20 on a Troy built GTX 20 and that thing was a beast you cut any grass, you put it under. Let's set those to 
off to the side. Spread these clips apart. Pull them off and get them out of the way for now. Okay, so we should be able to pull this throttle cable out now. And there it is. Now, we're going to have to move to the front of the machine. And there's two screws in the dash that we have to remove. We'll go ahead and remove those. And it's fairly easy with this adjustable wrench. For the, those of you that don't have a lot of tools, you can use this as a the whole project, you know. You don't have to go find a different wrench size every time. I myself use adjustable wrenches for stuff like this just because there's no reason it should be tight to where you can't get it loose with this. And if you're careful, you won't round them off. Yes, it's a lot slower, but it's okay. I'm not in any race. I'm just trying to get this cable swapped out. And pull it back up so we can get a better bite on it. it. Makes it much easier to take them both loose before you take one all the way out because then it's going to try and spin while it's in there. Slowly work these out shouldn't be too long. Drop the wrench. Once I get everything put back together on this, I'll probably do a video of you for you guys showing you it runs and drives and maybe even a video of me reattaching the deck. tight yeah just a little bit more it always helps to have a little bit of spray lubricant But, they're not too seized up, so I'm not worried about it. There we go. That one's out. I'm going to go ahead and take this top one out the rest of the way. You don't have to pull the black cover off of the lever if you don't want to. It's not going to affect anything with taking it apart. All we have to do is pull it down through here, twist it a little bit, and pop it off. We got the whole cable out. Other than we're stuck between the battery box, but there's that. Okay, we can set this one off to the side. And maybe reuse it later. Now, I'm going to have to use, make a new Z-Bend for the end of this. Which won't be a problem. But I'll bring you guys back after I get this squared away and make it look like the old one. Alright, so we're not 100% perfect, but we're pretty damn close. So I'm going to call that good. Now, we're going to go ahead and feed this through the front. basically repeat the steps that we just took to remove that one so we're gonna go ahead and feed this up through here we're not gonna tighten it all the way down until we're done we're just gonna throw these bolts in and get them started 
hold that in place for now. Then I'll bring you guys around here as we reassemble the rest of it. I'll move you off a little bit over here. So instead of going underneath the battery tray, we're gonna have to go around the front. And I might be a little unlucky this time. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reach it like I thought. Huh. Well, that's inconvenient. Thought I was gonna have enough length, but it doesn't look like I am. So we might have to source another cable or try and get this other one freed up. But, in the meantime, I'll bring you guys back once I figure out what I'm going to do with this. Okay, since that cable isn't the right length, I got this one unfreed. It moves freely now. Got it all back together. I'm going to go ahead and run this cable back through and show you guys it working. I'm just going to unfish this old short cable that doesn't fit back out. I'm going to run the new one back in. All I did to free this old cable up was to just take a little bit of spray lube down each end of the cable and then a pair of vice grips to pull it back and forth to get it loosened up. And then after that, it's ready to go. This one's popped out. Push this old one back in. Go ahead and put it down through the battery tray first, so it's not as hard. Once I can't move the other pieces of it, back through there, and then up through the front dash. And then we'll get some bolts started, and then I'll come back around to you guys up there. Then we'll take our clips for the side, get both cables ran through it after we put this Z-Bend back in our carburetor. Got that back in there, tuck it under that, and take both these cables together, put them back in their little holder, squeeze it back, put this bolt back in. to work with us right now at least get it started and we can come back and tighten it up afterwards there we go take this other one back in that one I can give her a nice squeeze to get it clamped back together. Okay, those are both in. Okay, now I can run these tight on this side. And to make the Z-bend on that other cable I was going to use, I just measured about the distance that the Z-bend was on the other cable and bent it with my adjustable wrench. And then I bent it the opposite way. And it worked pretty well. I know it's not the right way to do it because once they break, they're fragile. But in a pinch, you gotta do what you gotta do.
can't say that I don't do it once in a while when I need to in a rush for my own equipment. On a customer's equipment though, I wouldn't I wouldn't trust making your own Z-bend on a broken cable, maybe on a new unbent cable, but on something that's already been weakened by just wear and tear, you're not going to have much luck. Okay, pretty well snugged up there. And then just this little guy up here, and we're good to go. Then I'll show you guys that the cable moves freely now. Once I get this tightened up the rest of the way. Like I said, it doesn't have to be cranked down to the max. Just to keep the cable from sliding back and forth. One more good turn, I think we'll be in business. Then I'll move you guys to where you can see the carburetor lever moving back and forth. And then I'll take you up front. I'm showing you how that goes up there too. Okay, so we got that. I'll try and get you a close up of this moving back and forth, how it's supposed to now. You can see the lever moving and then up here you can see that moving just fine thanks for watching guys and like comment subscribe let me know what you think have a good day